Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling, and thank you very much for checking today's video out. Much appreciated. Got a really cool deal for you guys today. I got a. I'm actually going to read you guys a story from the 1975 issue of Bassmaster Magazine. This is the first the first tournament ever won with the flipping technique by D. Thomas, and this was the Arkansas Invitational on Bull Shoals, 1975 Bassmaster Magazine, and this is fascinating you guys are gonna everybody knows what flipping and pitching is now <clears throat> but this is the first tournament ever won and the technique was new at the time nobody knew about it so i think you guys are really going to enjoy this so real quick before we get started guys i just like to invite everybody if you guys are interested in supporting the channel by becoming a channel member that's a really good deal for a, a good way to support the channel and channel members get extra videos every week that aren't seen by the public access to my personal email address with some memberships if you guys are interested, uh, when you click on my YouTube channel, you'll see a little button that says join on it. Just hit that and it gives you all the info. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, let's get into this. I'm going to read you this, read you this story. Uh, flipping, it's called Flipping D. Thomas Winning Technique. There's a picture of him at Bull Shoals flipping there. Um, so we'll get into this. So this magazine is like completely tore up this Bassmaster magazine. Okay. Now this is a Bassmaster, uh, the winning pattern. For three days of pre-fishing and three days of uh, tournament competition, fishing stayed extra tough on, on Bull Shoals Lake. Bobby Murray, Bill Dance, Don Butler, and the rest could not find fish. That's some OGs there. For, for many, it was impossible even to catch one fish. As the fishing got tougher, the pros began to rag, to, beginning to reach into their bag of tricks for answers, and they repeatedly changed tactics to meet the new conditions, except for D. Thomas. The nights were busy with fishermen's respooling lighter and lighter line and four pound six, four to six pound tests became the order of the day for the clear waters of Bull Shoals, but D. just kept using his 25 pound test strand. Tom Mann and others went, Tom Mann, now the old, not Tom Mann Jr., but the Tom Mann from Mann's Jelly Worms. Tom Mann and others went down to, eighth ounce jigs and D just kept throwing the five eighth ounce jigs he'd brought from California. Closer to the end of the Arkansas Invitational Bassmaster Tournament, most of the competition fished deeper while D stayed in the shallows. As a matter of fact, D Thomas from Newark, California, a grocery store produce manager, did everything backwards. Yet after the first day of the April 2nd through the 4th tournament, he was only an ounce out of first place. On the second day, he jumped into first place, and on the third day, he sailed into the winner circle with a 35-pound, 6-ounce uh, tally, nobody even close to him. Most of the contenders had fished the shallows with little success and given up, but why did D catch fish when others couldn't? Why'd he, why could he consistently catch fish every day, often with a mile of the boat dock? All he did, and he did all of his uh, fishing from a small rental boat. He fished the Bassmaster Invitational out of a little rental boat, and he did it with one thing, he was flipping. Flipping is a new technique and a philosophy of bass behavior developed by Thomas maybe 15 years before. Thomas popularized the method, which is also known as tool dipping. It was similar to techniques such as jigger pulling and bank buzzing, but he laid the groundwork for a more effective method. As the tournament fishing became into being, it was only a matter of time before D was talked into competing. His success was almost instant, and many thought that his success was attributed solely to the 12-foot long rod he was using. Because he felt that it was they were because he felt they were at a disadvantage, many Western anglers complained, and the rules were rewritten to uh, limit the rods to seven and a half feet in length. This turned out to be a blessing in disguise for D. But now his tournament fishing was in his blood, so he went to he went to work developing a technique that was eventually called flipping, and that's how it was born. It turned out that the new method was even more effective than the old, and Dean managed to win tournaments, not just place high. By the end of last year, D arranged a sponsorship with Fenwick, and already got realized one of the highest goals to fish a Bassmaster Sportsman Society tournament. D tackled Toledo Bend first, but he could not give the pros a run for the money and had a lesson to learn. Knowing nothing about the lake is not a great advantage for D, but in the case of Toledo Bend, he had one serious handicap. 
with the heavy timber everywhere, he could not run the shoreline and find what he needed to find to hold bass. He was limited to the boat lanes and certain sections of the lake shore. This was back when the Toledo Bend was completely full of timber. But after a few days of frustration and marginal success, Thomas abandoned what he knew and turned to tournament fishing with more conventional means and did not do well. A month later at Bull Shoals was a different story. After his experience at Toledo Bend <coughs> and success in the tournaments out west, he had only two weeks left for vacation and he'd hoped to use one of the weeks for the Bassmasters Classic if he could qualify for it. What? What are you doing there? Um, I, hmm? um, can you hang out with me for a little bit? Okay, just a second. Okay, guys, I'll be right back here. Okay, guys, I'm back. Okay, um, anyway, he'd saved the, uh, this last week's of vacation for the Classic if he could qualify for it. The Bull Shoals Tournament was his last chance, so it was all or nothing. His practice consisted of running the lake within the fishing distance of his little boat and doing a lot of looking. Occasionally, he would stop and fish, but Dee primarily fishes by sight, knowing what's available for his flipping pattern. A pattern put together during a tournament would do him no good unless he could find more of the same water. Um, Dee found additional comfort that the lake resembled California's lakes and didn't seem to be as foreign as Toledo Bend's Tree of Jungles. He also found a wide variety of things to fish at Bull Shoals, which helped him put this pattern together. After all, his biggest advantage was the fishing is really tough, and Dee's method produces fairly consistent rain or shine. So where did he fish and what did he do? Dee practiced one day in the Theodosa area, one day up the lake to about Big Music Creek, and one day around the Bull Shoals boat dock, which was the headquarters of the tournament. He found a good concentration of fish in Little Sister Creek, and the first day of the tournament was spent there. Fortunately, it did not make any difference, but somehow Dee and his partners got their signals crossed up and ended the first day without a net. The first day, Dee lost more fish at the boat than he weighed in, if that would happen to me, I'd only fish the next two days with my mind blown by the whole thing, but not D. He didn't let that bother him. The second day, tournament or D went back to Little Sister Creek, and after fishing over an, only an hour, <clears throat> he felt there were too many boats that came into the area, and he made an all-or-nothing run to the Theodosa area, which I fished there a lot. This maybe 10-mile run, which was a lot in the little boat probably. He liked the look of that area, even though he didn't catch a fish in practice, and his gamble paid off as he weighed in uh, the top daily string of eight bass weighing 15 pounds, 14 ounces. The third day was limited to scratching out a few fish in the Theodosa area, which kept him, which turned out to keep him in uh, enough spot to keep him in the top spot. Tommy Martin, the 1974 Bassmasters Classic champion, was a distant second with 25 pounds. Thomas found fish on a number of patterns, small stick ups near steep banks produced fish, especially if they had floating debris around them. The floating debris was not a pattern in itself, but it seemed to improve any area. Areas near the ends of bluffs where a main channel would leave the bluff and move into the main body were also productive, as well as cut banks. Dee took a few fish from falling timber along the shoreline. Other fishermen had tried these patterns but failed. Dee kept, kept his technique of flipping a secret. Okay, and that so that explains that one, and then we'll get to the end of the tournament here. In this tournament, there was a late series snowstorm, temperatures around 50 degrees, a rising lake level, and a cold front, which combined for a serious case of shut mouth for the bass. On the first day of the tournament, 100 of 175 entrants fell to Bodie Keeper, which was 12 inches long, that baffled the majority of the. Uh, field. Here's the top three stringers, how they were caught. D. Thomas located his bass on the backs of coves and along bluff banks, and he was flipping a 5 8 ounce bucktail, black bucktail jig with a white plastic eel, a black jig with a white eel on it, throwing it into the trash pockets with a seven and a half foot rod. He strips the line off a casting rail and flips and dips the heavy jig around debris and in dark pockets. This trash washed in by floating lake levels covered one to two foot of depth of water. Evidently, the combination was somewhat warmer under the sawdust conditions. Second place, Dave Hilton fished a similar pattern 
He used a heavy 5 8 ounce jig and put a half ounce slip sinker above the jig to penetrate the thick stuff. That was before one ounce jigs. Tommy Martin finished third. He fished small crawdad crankbaits, a rebel humpy and a rebel scooper along bluff banks. And Charlie Campbell, or Charlie Hoover fished fourth with four pound test line and an eighth ounce weedless jig. So anyway, guys, that was the, uh, the first tournament ever won flipping. There's a picture of the of the jigs that he won the tournament on, if you can see that. Doesn't show a white trailer, but just old Maribu jig. But anyway, I thought that was a, a really cool piece of history there. First tournament ever won flipping. Um, I do remember reading about that in, in Bassmaster years ago when I was in grade school. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it and just wanted to share that with you. See y'all.